All right, so today I'm going to be painting this dude from the Warhammer Underworld's Crimson Court, the new uh, vampire vampire Underworlds guys. So I'm going to do this pretty quickly, um, just like the skeleton I did last week. I'm going to try to just churn through him and uh, see where we end up. So I'm starting off with Griff Charger Gray. I'm going to paint his base. This is uh, not going to be the final color of the base, but it's a nice, uh, a nice color that will sit under the eventual color and give it a little bit of, I don't want to say texture, but a little bit of color variety in the tiles. We're going to end up painting them brown, but I don't want them to just be brown, so this will help change it up a little bit. Just want to make sure to get all of this. It's got a lot of rubble and stuff underneath him. So we'll get all that. Alright, there we go. And I'm starting with that so that it can dry while we do the rest of the paint job. So, now, I'm going to move on and just do his skin. And I'm just doing that in some Apothecary White, just to give him this night, nice, pale skin tone that I imagine vampires would have. And I just want to make sure when I'm putting this on that I'm not completely covering surfaces to make them gray. I still want them to show the primer through this, which is a Wraithbone primer in this case, but I do want the gray in the shadows. He's got some skin showing in here. I believe yep that's it all right so I'm gonna let this dry and then we'll come back and do the next step all right so that stuff is all dry now we're gonna move on to doing some of the leather that appears on him we're gonna do this in snakebite leather So that'll be the scabbard on the sword here. It's got a couple pouches on the other side. We'll do those as well. And when I'm painting with contrast paint like this, I always want to make sure that I'm going in more or less lightest to darkest order. So that if I make mistakes, say with this brown, the next color I do will cover over the brown and hide those mistakes. Um, if I did it in reverse order, say I did the armor first with a dark color, and then did the skin, any run over onto the skin would uh, would show through the white that I did. So, just want to work in reverse order, and then, which that also means you're getting more and more careful the farther into the paint job you go. Which I like, personally. I like having kind of a relaxed starting point where you're just kind of slapping paint on there getting going and then as you get into it you're becoming more and more meticulous and more and more careful all right so i think that's it i'm just going to do these stripes or stripes these uh these leather straps here that are holding his armor plates on And they are on the other leg, okay. And this is what I'm talking about, how we can be kind of messy with this, because we're going to do his armor in red, and the red will cover right over those brown patches, no problem. But we do need to let this dry before we move on to the red, so I will get this all dried, and we'll come back and do the armor. 
All right, so all our leather is dry and ready to go. So now we're going to move on to the armor, which is the biggest component of this guy. So this is going to be Blood Angel's Red we're going to use. And I'm just going to start putting it on there. These, uh, these vampires from the Underworld kit are one of the best um, examples of models that take contrast paint incredibly well. Because of all the facets in their armor, the contrast paint settles really well down into the recesses, doesn't pool on the surfaces because it doesn't have a lot of surface to pool on, and so it works out really well. So then, when I'm going around these straps, I'm just being careful not to hit them. But, as you can see, the little bit of runover from the brown we had just gets covered right over with the red. And that's what we want. We're trying to avoid the cloth on this guy as much as possible. Um, the paint scheme I'm going for, it has one slight problem in terms of ease of painting, that the cloth color and the armor color will both show over each other no matter which order we do them in. So if I did the cloth and then the armor, any mistake is going to show through, and if I do the armor and then the cloth, any mistake is going to show through. So we just have to be careful. Sometimes there's no avoiding that sometimes you're not going to be able to just work in a direct line of lightest to darkest. But you work around it and uh, I'm sure it'll work out in the end. I've done the other three vampires and it's worked out just fine, so we'll keep going on that path. And yeah. So I'm just going to go ahead and finish up the armor here. And then when it's all done, I'll make sure it's all dry and we'll come back and paint the cloth. So I'll see you in a bit. All right, our armor is all painted up and now we're gonna go on to the cloth. So for that, we're gonna use a Kelly and green. Um, this on camera often appears just straight up blue, but uh, in person, it's sort of an aqua bluish green and the slight green in it helps contrast with the red of the armor um, and really makes them pop, I think. Um, but on camera, it just looks straight up blue. Uh, I'm not sure why that is. Probably because my camera is not the best. But um, I'm happy with how it looks in person. And a lot of people do say that really that the, the picture of the miniature is more the product than the miniature itself. And that's to some extent true. <clears throat> and I suppose on YouTube like this, that really is true. You guys, <coughs> excuse me, you guys most likely will not ever see this miniature in person. Hopefully you will, but you know, probably not. And so really the the image that you guys see on the screen is the only way you'll ever have to look at this miniature. And so maybe I should think about painting it in such a way that it looks better on camera. But I think for now, I'll stick with what I'm happy with in person. And I might be able to take some pictures to adjust lighting or something and get the green that is in this to show up. But we'll see. So I'm just being slow and steady here with this. I'm making long sweeping strokes with the brush on this because I don't want the I don't want the contrast paint pooling in the middle of the cloak. I want it to run all the way down the cloak. And when you're painting cloth like this with contrast paint, you want to use more paint than you think you should. Because it'll help give you a smoother finish at the end. It'll take longer to dry and you'll go through your paint faster, but I promise it's worth it. So I'm just painting the back of the cloak here. You can see through his legs. This would look 
could anyway be an opportunity for a sub-assembly. I don't typically paint in sub-assemblies, mostly because I'm lazy and impatient, but if you wanted to, you absolutely could. Alright, so there's this cloth all done. So that basically wraps up the contrast section of this video. We're going to get this all dried up and then move on to some layer paint. All right, so we've got all our armor dried and ready to continue. So we're going to continue with Iron Warriors, and we're going to do this on his weapon, as well as the rivets that appear on his armor, and possibly some other details we'll see as we go. But I'm just going to paint his weapon first. His weapon is so tall, I'm struggling to keep it in shot <laughs> sometimes. These, uh, these vampires in this set are quite large. Um, some people have said that they think it's down to scale creep. I think, personally, it's more just they went for the tall vampire stereotype. Which is fine with me. Personally, I think they look really cool this tall. But, it's not for everyone, I admit. Bigger miniatures are also, generally, at, at least at the the level of detail that I go to, are, uh, are easier to paint, so I'm happy there, too. Obviously, if you're going for a like crazy level of detail or competition painting or something, bigger miniatures can actually be harder to paint because of having to like add in texture on surfaces and all that kind of stuff, but for my level of painting, the bigger the miniature, the easier it is to paint. So just being careful to avoid the armor and the cloth while doing this. Good. Alright, now I'm just going to go in and do the rivets. Carefully. And I'm not going to do rivets on things like this because this trim here is going to be painted in gold. So no sense in painting over or painting that since we're just going to paint over it in a bit. If he has rivets anywhere else, he might not. It's all going to be gold. Yeah, I think that's it. Alright, so that'll do it for our silver. Now I'm going to get some Rakarth flesh out and do these big horns that appear on the top of him here and the bones that are on his base. So we'll do the bones first. That's a stake. We'll come back to that. But this right here is a bone. Grab that real quick. That might actually be the only bone that we can really see. So I'm just going to go for these horns then. I'm trying to be careful. And I see I got a little bit of this paint on the armor there, but the, uh, the wash we're going to come back and put on will fix that up, no problem. Oh, there's some armor I missed here. Alright, I'll touch that up while I let this stuff dry. And then we'll continue on. Just make sure to get all sides of this horn. Cylinders can be tricky to paint sometimes. You can accidentally forget to do a side because you didn't look at it at all angles, so... Just gotta rotate the miniature around and make sure that you get all of it. I think these right here look like they're bones or horns or something also, so I'm gonna paint them the same way. Alright, there we go. 
So I'm gonna let this dry and I'm gonna get my gold and we'll come back and start using that. All right, we're back after all that. It's nice and dry. And now I'm gonna use some Necro Gold from scale 75. And I'm just gonna paint in this trim on his armor as well as the handle of his knife slash sword he has on his hip here and the decoration on the scabbard. Just want to make sure we cover all the red on these sections. And um, if you don't have scale 75 paints, and you're just using Citadel, um, Games Workshop paints, nothing wrong with that. Um, the paint that is called what? <laughs> I've forgotten the name of the paint. There is a gold that is very similar to this color though, so if you want to try to replicate this color, um, it is doable with Citadel colors. I got a bunch of scale 75 paints a couple years ago though, and I'm just kind of... I mix them in occasionally. I'm not a super big fan of the non-metallic ones, but the metallic ones I like a lot, so I use them pretty often. Alright, so now I'm going to paint the details on the scabbard here. Then he's got some little decorations holding his cloak here. Alrighty, and that should do it for the gold on him. I'm just going to tidy a couple things up, and then we will come back and work on the base a little bit. Alright, so tidied up a couple mistakes, made sure our gold was nice and dry. Now I'm going to work on the base. So I'm going to start off with Gorthor Brown, and I'm just going to paint this stake that's on the base. Uh, whoever tried to stab him wasn't very successful based on the nature of this stake. Or maybe he happens to be immune to stakes, I don't know. I'm sure the armor would probably help quite a bit in that department. Alright, there we go. Now I'm going to take some Pallid Witch Flesh and I'm going to paint all the rubble that's on the base with this. Also gonna get this little fleck of red that we got on the base here. I'm just gonna cover that up like that. Done. Alright, then I'm just gonna paint this rubble. Not necessarily cover it completely, but just kinda highlight it, basically. Um, basically I want it to look like some white marble chunks fell, maybe from the ceiling of the place he's in, or something like that fell onto the floor. Just, I want them to be differentiated from the ground. So I'm just doing that with some white. The, uh, the blue that we used, or the gray, will still show through. But we'll have that. Alright, so then we're going to go on to the color of the ground itself. And for that we're going to use Agaros Dunes. And I'm just going to cover the floor tiles with this, basically. Just going to be careful 
in and around the stuff I just painted white. And make sure to get the, the rim of the base here. The, um, the basing has depth and you don't want to leave the side of that unpainted. But like I said, just being careful of the stuff we just finished painting white. Like there, I was not careful, but I can just wipe it off and then repaint it. And this color is pretty light, so going around the the um, armor is easy because if a little bit gets up on the armor, no one will be able to tell. So then we'll just get in to these more tricky spots here. Get in there. And it doesn't have to be perfect. It is just the basing of the miniature, which is important, don't get me wrong, but it doesn't have to be super duper accurate all the time. Alright, so there's the base basically done. So now we're going to move on to some Nuln Oil. There we go. And we're going to put this on some surfaces completely, like the weapon here, uh, the scabbard. Um, the other leather parts, the horns, and I think that's about it. But then on the armor and the cloak, we're going to use it as a spot wash and only put it exactly where we want it. And again, just like the what I talked about with the cloth, you want to use more null oil than you think on big, um, kind of, not flat surfaces, but smooth surfaces like this so you want a nice smooth finish of that null oil and using more wash than you think is how you do that you just have to make sure it doesn't pool in any areas when you're done so, get it all over this again make sure it's not pooling pull a little bit too much down there just pull it off tap your brush on your paper towel and then just pull it off you're all good. So then we're going to do it on this trim here. Pin the trim down here. Good. All right, and then we're going to do it on these straps just to get kind of some shade around the straps to make it look like there's some depth to them. There we go. And then we're going to do some under these armor panels here, just like this. Above the knee there. And then down here. Just to darken these areas of armor up. Here on the shoulders, same thing. Alright. Then we'll do a little bit up here. Basically just anywhere that there's a kind of a transition of armor plates, we can put some in there. Just to give us a little more contrast than the contrast paint gives. And then I'm just going to use some on the cloak, so I'm just going to put some in here, darken that up a little bit, down in here, and then just a little bit in the recesses of the cloak, just to shade it a little bit more. And then I'm just going to start looking around the miniature basically and finding little spots to add it in. can do this pretty much as much or as little as you want until you're happy with it. And I think that looks good. Maybe one more little line of it right here. There we go. I think I'm... Oh, no. We got a little bit more back here. Right down in there. And just flare it up. There we go. 
All right, so I think we're happy with that. I'm going to get this all dried, and then we'll come back and do the last couple details and finish them up. All right, let's get to these finishing touches. So first I'm gonna use just some black Templar contrast paint. And I'm just gonna fill in his eyes in black. Nothing fancy, I just want them to be sort of bottomless pits, basically. Just fill them in. This one needs a little bit of work. That'll do. Then we're gonna take some, what is this? Fire Dragon Bright, and just do a couple edge highlights. Not tons. We don't, we're not gonna hit every single edge, but we'll do a couple. So I'm gonna do this one over here. And if you're new to edge highlights, um, or if you're just you know, not the greatest edge highlighter, like I am, to be honest, I'm not the greatest. Uh, you really just want to find a really good brace position. So mine is like this. I have the, the handle with my finger above it, thumb below it like that. And then I kind of use my thumb and the part of the finger that's sticking out here as a stop for my other hand. And then I just come in and I'm just very careful. Go very slowly. But the brace position is what, what does it. You want to keep your your hand as still as possible while doing this and just move the brush. And um, so what I'm doing here is selective edge highlighting. I'm not sure if that's an official term, but that's the term I use. And so when you're doing that, you basically want to only pick lines that are going to draw the, the viewer of the miniature. Um, they're going to draw their eyes to the rest of the miniature, if that makes sense. So you don't want to like, you don't want to like make your kneecaps look the cool as look like the coolest part of the miniature. You want to make sure that they see the whole miniature. So, so I did the lines here on his legs, which are pointing sort of up towards the rest of the miniature. Now I'm doing the sweeps on the shoulders, which point in towards the miniature. Now I'm gonna do the outsides of the boots down here, which again point in to the miniature. And then I'm gonna do just this right here which will point up and in, and then this back there. Do the same thing on the other side. Just make sure I have the same line, yep, I do. Like that. All right, and then I'm gonna do these shoulder lines right here. Good. I'm just going to strengthen this one a little bit. That's better. Alright, and then I think we are done with him. I'm just going to maybe highlight right here along the edge. Let's go down like that. And down like this. go. Alright, so now I'm just gonna grab some of the null oil that's sitting in a couple places, pooling incorrectly, and just wiggle it around. We want that to dry nicely, so we don't want it to pool too much. Just do that. Alright. A little bit down here in the cape. We'll just move it around. and It'll be okay. Alright, so then the last thing to do Nope, I lied. There's a couple things to do. So I'm going to take some Gulliman Flesh, 
and just put it around his mouth to give it some some color in there. There we go. Nothing major, just a little bit. Then I'm going to take some null oil and apply it to the details of the base. So the stake right here needs some null oil. Give it a nice shadow around it. There we go. And then the bone back here, same thing. And then put it along the rubble just a little bit, just to deepen the shadows. And then I'm going to deepen the shadows of his foot as well. Like that. And then there's one more spot I noticed that needs a little bit more null oil right there. I just want to accentuate the transition between that horn and the uh, armor, and then right here between the skin and the armor. There we go. Maybe skin and weapon here also. And then just a little bit in the fingers. This is the sort of thing you can fiddle with all day, but. I'm going to call it there. So then the only thing left to do... Uh, I keep saying that, but nope. One more thing before the last thing. We're going to take some Baharoth blue and just do some very, very, very subtle edge highlights on the cloth here. Very gently... And again, I'm just doing a couple. And then on the back here, just on the sharpest of edges. So here and here. That looks good. And then we'll do it along this line here. Looks good. And then maybe right here. And check the other side. That looks good. And then how about the bottom. Notice I'm using the side of my brush now for this. Makes it a little bit easier. There we go. Alright, so now he's all done, I think. Just gonna paint the base rim. So we'll pop him off of this. Get the Black Templar back out. Make sure the spots you're grabbing are dry. And I'm just going to work my way around the base slowly. Making sure not to get paint up onto the side of the stones here. If I do get a little bit, I'll just come back and fix it afterward. Not a huge deal. So I'll add some pictures here of him uh, in all his glory after he's dried. But thank you everybody for watching. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And I will see you next time.